Okay, hello. So today we're going to be talking about the conjectures you created about the diagonals of a parallelogram. But first, I have some questions before we can begin proving this and looking at the conjectures you made. So my first question is, what even is a diagonal? What do we mean by a diagonal? So when I look up the definition, of a diagonal, I get something that looks like this image, and it says a line segment that goes from one corner to another, but is not an edge. So in this example right here, we have this as a diagonal, and we could also consider uh, from this point to this point a diagonal, because we're going from one corner to another corner. So let's look at our parallelogram example. C, D. Okay. So, what would our diagonals look like on parallelogram A, B, C, D? Yeah, we would want to connect A, C. Would A, D be a diagonal? No. Right, that would not be a diagonal. Our other one would be segment B, D. Okay, so we only have two diagonals in a parallelogram. And then my other question before we begin is, what is happening with these diagonals? What do we notice? And first thing I notice is that these diagonals must occur inside the shape. They're not outside the shape. They have to be inside. So something that has to happen, and we can make an assumption based on this diagram, is that they must intersect right at this point we're going to call it x, okay? We don't know precisely where it is, what's happening with these, these diagonals yet, but we know they have to intersect, okay? So that's going to be helpful when we create our conjectures. Okay, so before we can make a conjecture, let's see what we know about this parallelogram. All right, so we've got A, B, C, D here, and what do I know about a parallelogram to begin with? Yes, okay, so we have to state the definition of a parallelogram. What is a parallelogram? And like Kelly was saying, a parallelogram is when the opposite sides are parallel. So they're going to intersect at this point X. And then another thing that Kelly just stated, A, B, going to be parallel to DC and AD, let's use a different color, AD will be parallel to BC because of the definition of a parallelogram. That is our definition. All right, <clears throat> what can I say next? Knowing information about the opposite sides being parallel, what can I say? Yes, okay, Tommy. Tommy is saying that angle DAC, the angle DAC is congruent to angle ACB. So he's saying this angle is congruent to this angle because AB is parallel to DC. Do we agree with that statement or disagree? Okay, Amari is disagreeing with that statement, and she is disagreeing because she said that is not the intersection point with AB in the transversal AC. So, based on Tommy's statement, we would have to say because AD is parallel to BC, then we can use the alternate interior angle theorem because we have our transversal AC right here. So be careful with the lines you're picking, okay? So let's go ahead and use the AD being parallel to BC statement. So alternate interior angle theorem, for short, with AIA theorem, okay? So, because we know those angles are congruent, what can we say about angle ADB and angle D, 
BC. We can also say, good, good, Kimmy. So we can also say the angle ADB is congruent to angle, we said ADB. Then that would also be, that would also be congruent to angle CBD, right? Okay. Okay, now, what else do we know about a parallelogram that maybe we can say here? I'll give you a few minutes to talk with your table partners and then we'll come back together and discuss. Okay, so a theorem we've already proved is that the opposite sides are congruent of a parallelogram. But Mark is saying true because this is part of the definition of a parallelogram. Raise your hand if you agree with this statement. Okay, so we're about half and half. So technically the reasoning would not be correct. The theorem is correct, but the reasoning is incorrect because that is not part of the definition. The definition of a parallelogram is that the opposite sides are parallel. That's all we know about the definition, okay? So that's called a property, not a definition. It's something that exists outside of the definition, but is known about the shape. So we can say that segment AB is congruent to segment DC. And we can also say, so we can say segment AD is congruent to segment DC and segment A, B, sorry, AD is congruent to segment BC. All right, so let's get that typed here. Okay, now that we know this, what do we know about these triangles that we just figured out? I'll give you a few minutes, talk with your table partners, and then we will discuss. Okay, so uh, Timmy's group back there is saying that triangle, these two triangles across from one another are congruent by angle side angle. Thumbs up if you agree, thumbs down if you disagree. Okay, good. So we're pretty much all in agreement. And that is true. So how would I go about actually saying this? So if I have triangle XAD, I would say it's congruent to triangle X, X, B, C. Okay, so this is what um, Brandon is saying. Do we agree? Okay, why do you disagree? Right, so those, that actually would not be the correct way to say this because that would be saying that like angle D, B, C is congruent to angle C, A, D. So we need to be careful with our wording. So triangle XCB instead. Okay, so we know that triangle, and furthermore, we want to look at what is happening with these diagonals. What can we say about them now that we know these triangles are congruent? So once again, I'm gonna give you time to talk with your partners. Alrighty, let's discuss. So I heard lots of good things. So by the corresponding parts of congruent angles, this is what uh, Kelly was saying. Um, well, by looking at our statement, triangle XAD is congruent to triangle XCB, that lets us know that XA is congruent to XC. So we have uh, we have this segment right here being congruent to this segment right here. So by corresponding parts of congruent triangles is congruent to x b. Good. All right. So we've gotten pretty far. Um, 
what we need to discuss, your conjecture so far, and then what we can actually say about this. So we did find something out about these diagonals, but we're gonna wanna term this differently. But first, let's discuss some of the conjectures you came up with. So I heard some students and read papers of the conjectures saying that uh, the diagonals cut the shape in half. So interior angle theorem, this angle is congruent to this angle. And we can say this angle is congruent to this angle. So eventually we would get that this triangle is congruent to this triangle. Okay, so essentially we would have this triangle being equal to this triangle, and this triangle is congruent to this triangle. So when I put this together, this, we would have this one large triangle right here. So we would have this large triangle, and then this large triangle. They would be congruent because we do have two congruent triangles paired together. But that's not what we're trying to say about the diagonals. We want to make a statement about the diagonals. And then I also heard that the diagonals are congruent. So it was essentially, um, Brianna was saying that uh, this, all of these diagonals, so dx is congruent to ax, it's congruent to bx and cx. We actually do not know that. All we know as of right now is that dx is congruent to bx and ax is congruent to cx. Okay, but as we get to the end of this, we are going to figure out what's happening with our shape when we do actually have congruent diagonals. But as of right now, I wanna stick with the idea that this segment's congruent to this one and this segment's congruent to this one. So there were some people that did have this as a solution uh, for their conjecture. So the idea we're trying to get to is that this segment, this diagonal AC bisects segment DB. So by bisecting, I mean cutting in half. So it's cutting in half another segment. That's what the term bisect means. So AC would bisect DB, meaning it splits it into two equal parts. Okay, so, okay, briefly before I, I write the conjecture and we talk about the conjecture, uh, we also talked about angle bisectors, okay? So angle bisectors in, is when it was cutting that angle in half. So this line, this line bisector is the same idea. And then we're also going to talk about another bisector later on. So we're going to have three different types of bisectors. But this is something now we know about the diagonals of a parallelogram. So, so how might I write this now? Now that I know this, we know what a bisector is. Incorporate it into your conjecture definition. Okay, so... Amari is saying that if a parallelogram exists, then the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect one another. So I full on agree with this statement um, because this is how we would use the word bisect. So we would be saying that they bisect one another. So AC bisects DB and BD bisects AC. So cutting each in half because <clears throat> we have two congruent parts. Okay, so now I want to know, can we apply this definition to other shapes? And if so, which shapes can we apply it to and which shapes can we not apply it to? So go ahead and use your quadrilateral hierarchy and then we will discuss which shapes does this new property we found about parallelograms apply to. Alrighty, so time to come back together. So. Juana is telling me and her group members that uh, this new property we found does not apply to a rhombus um, because she believes since the rhombus is not underneath the parallelogram, it doesn't apply. 
who can answer to Juana? Agree, disagree? All right, Jimmy is saying that a rhombus is a parallelogram because it is connected right on this quadrilateral hierarchy and a rhombus does have opposite parallel sides. Okay, so do we agree, disagree with Jimmy? Okay, so most of us are in agreement. So anything which connects, it doesn't necessarily have to be underneath, but if there's a connection, then it is a parallelogram. And we are able to apply definitions that we found from parallelograms, sorry, excuse me, not definitions from parallelograms, properties from parallelograms to other shapes if they do fall within that hierarchy. So a kite, we cannot apply this to a kite because a kite is not a parallelogram. So then, based on our images as well, this applies to all parallelograms, right? It doesn't just apply to the singular one I drew. We have to apply it to all parallelograms, okay? So for tomorrow, I'd come up with, so we are going to figure out what happens to the shape if all diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent. So this will be your task for the next time, and I'll see you tomorrow.